Oh, hey, it worked. What do you know? Uh, okay. You just gotta wait for everybody else to, to get in. There's our guest, and there's NZ. Hello. Howdy. What up? Oh, I already see we got some people pouring in right now. Indeed we do. All right, all right. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, Clover was so eager, she jumped in right at that moment. Ba, 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 ba. I'm just gonna let everybody trickle in. Is there a way we could ping everybody? Yes, I think I can do I it. Don't. I think I have that R. Oh, I do have that power. Ooh. You got the power. Yes. I hope she gets that message. We're all plotting behind the scenes before we officially get started. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. And I still can't whistle. All right. But I think we should get started. We're like four minutes in. And hello, Rainboom. All right. So let's. So shall we get started? Alrighty. How about you do the introduction this time, MC? I do every single one of these. All right, sure thing. Welcome everyone to the Sonic Revolutions Q and A with Coliosis. Yes, Hello. joining me is my joining me is my is our special guest Coliosis, and along with my special co-host, Ultimate Voice Actor, and I'm Hi. MC Voices. So anyway, well, let's get started. Y'all yeah, y'all know me already. I'm not going to do the introduction. Colossus, uh, uh, please. Uh, I actually don't know how to say your name. <laughs> it's Coliosis. Coliosis. It's, uh, like yeah, Scoliosis. It's, it, exactly. I didn't know what it was because I didn't oh. come up with that nickname. So it's like, oh, oh, it sounds cool. I'll take it. All right. Well, that'll be our first question. How'd you come up with the name? <laughs> it was um, when, I, when I was a kid, someone who worked at our old church would uh, come up to me and say, what's up, Coliosis? And I had no idea what he was referring to at the time. Like, I thought it was just his own little colorful take on my name. But then um, a few years later, I'm thinking back to it and I'm finally asking myself, how did he come up with that? I think it was my parents who told me exactly what the Eosis was from. And like, I had no problem with it because, again, I thought it sounded cool, though that wasn't the Internet nickname that I first had when I started making my own presence here. Um, originally, I wanted to call myself Marshmallow Productions, but when I saw that name was already taken, that's when I switched gears to what I believed sounded much cooler, and it stuck since then. Do you mind telling us? <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm yeah. still kind of pro processed Marshmallow Productions. Uh, it was just a little something my dad suggested, but it didn't go down all the way. <laughs> suggested. Oh, gosh. I'm glad you chose uh, Coliosis instead of <laughs> Marshmallow Productions. Uh, all right, go ahead and You would have had the Ghostbusters come after you. Ah, oh, no. So anyway, do you mind telling us a little bit more about what you do on online? What do you, what content you create? Yes. Um, I actually have like two different passions here on the internet and the first passion is what uh all of you within the community probably already know me for i make uh, audio dramas i uh, have been doing this since late 2017 um i write a story i uh, cast some voice actors i gather these sound effects and this music and i piece them all together to come up with a colorful way of telling these stories uh, specifically for youtube because originally i just wrote these stories for fanfiction.net and i officially moved everything to youtube because obviously it's a bigger platform i thought that's where i would get better traction and stuff like that and then the other side is probably the most recognizable is my record company coliosis records I promote, release, and distribute uh, content from currently unsigned Christian extreme music artists, you know, ranging genres throughout uh, death metal, unblack metal, doom metal, grindcore, noisecore, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's where I have gotten the most success during my entire presence here on the internet, believe it or not. Nice. Mm -hmm. yep, very nice. All right, I'll throw a question at at you. So, besides Sonic, 
What are your other passions? What are your other fandoms you're in? Well, um, I do enjoy some of those um, classic first-person shooters like Doom, uh, currently playing through Half-Life. I also really love uh, Mario, Mortal Kombat especially, uh, Twisted Metal, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, to name a few. And I don't know if I'll be able to list them all right away, but that's like where I am indulging the most in. Hmm. Very cool. I am Z, throw one M. Okay, so what inspired you to be a voice actor? Oh, that's a good one. Well, originally, voice acting wasn't the dream that I was looking for. Like, throughout the years, throughout the past uh, 10 or more years, I was just writing like crazy. I wanted to write. I wanted to be able to tell some stories because I was more of the storyteller type. I was more of the thinker. And the whole voice acting thing just came when I uh, began turning these stories into audio dramas. And I would just so happen to voice whomever was not casted at the end of the casting time. And so I would get these characters coincidentally. And Knuckles just so happens to have been one of those characters in 2021 when working on Supersonic Squad. And then when you you probably remember this you asked me to voice knuckles for your first comic dub the uh, chili dog stand face off that's my first one but yeah Knuck- i know. yeah that's when it became a regular thing to voice knuckles for mine yours or anyone else's who was interested that it just came to me and ultimately you got another question uh yes let me grab one real quick um <clears throat> let's see uh, what Sonic characters do you like the most, and why? I mean, I guess that also depends on which iterations you're talking about, because each of them have their own different flair to them. So, for example, like, with Sonic himself, he is, like, he's somewhat different in the films than he is in the games. He's more like the kid-at-heart type, and that has to be one of my favorite iterations of Sonic, other than his moody boom iteration and growing up one of my personal favorites was dr eggman no matter what iteration we're talking about i'm like yeah he's still one of the best uh villains in fiction i've ever known Hmm. and it also included shadow and you guessed it knuckles in fact i admire him in almost every iteration there are some that were just they just didn't really stick out to me. That included Underground and Prime Knuckles, but all other Knuckles, they're just amazing. And for other favorites, Sally Acorn. I still like her better than Amy. Don't hate me for that. Um, uh, that's a hot take right there. You may have already made some enemies in here. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. Not too many, I hope. No, no. Anyway, maybe one or two. Anyway, you got another question here. What is your favorite Sonic game? My favorite game has to be the one that I've spent the most time on, and that is Sonic Unleashed. Oh, where's Kelp? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> so, Unleashed, I honestly played the Wii version first. Hmm. And I, like, no matter what version I played, in the end, I beheld an atmosphere of traveling around this beautiful looking world. It was the atmosphere that really just pulled me in when playing as the werehog at night. And then there's the fact that the game isn't cluttered with an overwhelmingly large amount of characters like in most other titles. This has a really simplified cast, so we can focus more on the world and the exploration and the just how different it is from all other Sonic titles. It, it just turned out beautifully. And I love the soundtrack too. Mm, so, all right. Very good. A lot of Unleashed people great game. game. I haven't played it. I played a little bit of it. I plan to play more of it. So let's see. Uh, what's the hardest project you've ever worked on? That's a good question. There were some audio dramas that took more time than usual 
And it was because of either casting difficulties or anything else of the sorts. And I think the most difficult one was this was a holiday special that MC wrote in at the end of 2022. It was going to be a Supersonic Squad Christmas special called Hard of the Holidays. And what we wanted to do was have these illustrations, like each one for a different scene. And I've seen the multi fandom fangirl do something like that. I just forgot what it was called. Uh, I think it was like an Eggman Christmas special, uh, Christmas Carol. And so we wanted to do something like that, but we couldn't finish it on time at the end of 2022. So all we had was just this rough mix of the audio. And then one year later, we tried bringing it back. We were, we didn't finish them all on time and we were only able to use just one illustration. We were like, we're done waiting. Let's just stick with this one and be done. And that, um, the ultimate version was not what we had hoped it would be, but at least it became the most viewed installment in the whole series. We, we released it on Christmas Eve, 2023, and at least the viewership was great. We were proud of ourselves for uh, what we got in the end, at least. Nice. Yep, I remember that. Anyway, we got a few hands raised. You can turn in audience questions right now. I can we one hand right. raise. It's called it's called Pop Culture Dude. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Can you gentlemen hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, you look you look familiar. Uh, do I look familiar? Do I sound familiar? Or does the oh, user that's right. you're Eggman for MC? Okay. Now I was gonna say because I'm like, wait a minute, these usernames seems quite familiar and since I'm they are sorry, I haven't seen you in a hot minute. I haven't heard you in a hot minute either. I know I've been living under a rock and been drinking mushroom coffee in my spare time, but no worries. Oh, I'm muted. Same. I muted non copyright music in the background, so this doesn't interfere with any, I don't know, copyright restrictions if this ever goes on the YouTube channel. But however, since, uh, like what you just said, right, we've worked together in uh, plenty of MC Voices side comic dubs. If I had to bring out one question, what's so appealing about the specific character that you're typecast while you're voicing, whether it's a Sonic, a Knuckles, a Shadow, a Dr. Steinline, what makes it so appealing when you voice those characters? And that applies to all of you guys here. Huh. I guess what makes it appealing is, like... I think it all depends on uh, which iteration they are looking for. If they're looking for uh, something more game-based or film-based, then you can uh, have a lot of fun practicing the voice sector that they had in those iterations. Like, for example, uh, if I'm ever casted to do movie Knuckles, then I can have fun doing Idris Elba's accent. Or if I do game Knuckles, I can do Dave B. Mitchell or Travis Willingham or whichever else they're looking for. And I could, it's the variety is what I can have fun with. It's like bringing my voice through multiple ranges to not just nail what they're looking for, but just to have fun with it. And I tend to do that quite a lot whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm recording voices. Seems like a quite interest response. If I got to give you one compliment, your Boom Knuckles voice, spot on. That's all I'm going to say. Hilarious and in vain with the character, especially with his comedy roots. Thank you. You're welcome, bud. Anyway, gentlemen, any responses to the same question? That's not our mm -hmm. panel. Okay. I'm just asking just in case, but I know it's on this guy right here on the right, on yellow. Ordinarily, I would love to talk for hours about myself, but this ain't about myself. It's about, uh, Mm -hmm. Cole, Cole, Cole yeah. help me here. Coliosis. I was going to say, like, I'm you. not the only one to how to pronounce that word. Can we just call you Cole for short? Yes, please. Yes, yes. thank you. Thank goodness. Yeah, because it kind of sounds like you're kind of compared to Metamorphosis or something, but <laughs> since it's only just for one question, I guess that'll be all. If anyone else wants to come by, raise your hand and enjoy the rest of the panel. All right. Thank you, my good you. sir. You know, bye -bye I, you know, Daniel. Yeah, Daniel, I think this is actually the first time we have interacted together outside of character. You know what? That's actually a good thing. So that's why when I saw the user's name, it's like, yeah, I don't contact these guys that much outside of voiceover because I'm off doing my own thing. But I'm like, you know what? Let me just socially interact to this bubble of Sonic Revolution. To be fair, I have not been um, presenting a Revo, whether it's in character or out of character. So I'm like, eh. 
when the doors are open, have a chance to pop in for a little bit. So I just came to I was like, this could be my chance, even if it's only for a temporary time. And this is fairly the first time we've ever interacted at all. Yep, you're welcome. So ever since I saw your panel just going live and then when I saw familiar usernames, I'm like, oh yeah, these guys from these uh Sonic Comic Dubs. Let me stop by, say hello, and think of a good question before um you guys keep on rolling. And I'm surprised that no one has raised their hands. I'm like, let me do the first dibs on it. So that's why I did it. First come, first served. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, thank you so much. No it's problem. Take you. care of the servers. I can't take your help. Bye bye then. All right, Ultimate, you got another question? Yeah, let me let me ask another one real quick. I'm ready. Uh, let's see. What's your favorite non-Sonic game? I think the best video game I've ever played in my life is Twisted Metal Black. Um, it, it's an installment within a long-running franchise of car combat, but this one in particular stood out to me the most because this one was a lot more horror themed it had a much darker eerie atmosphere to it and it's like driving around in that kind of atmosphere no matter what kind of location it is whether it be uh, like a suburb or a junkyard or downtown or whichever it may be while fighting for your life is just it's incredible and you've got an amazing soundtrack to it too and if the if the sequel ever saw the light of day, that would have been the best too. And all I can play of it is prototypes, Twisted Metal Harbor City. And just seeing that atmosphere return, I, I would have been I would have been thrilled to see it actually released. But what you see is what you get. Twisted Metal is just that kind of car combat I grew up with that I just wish it never died. And legends never die, all right? Mm. Very nice. Very oh, nice like question. A, mm, sounds like a game I haven't heard of. I, was it like a triple A game or was it produced by like a big company or? Well, it was um, it was produced by companies that have come and gone, but it's it's published by Sony. It's a PlayStation exclusive oh, yeah. title. Sony. Ah, that explains a lot. <laughs> I'll be real. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So, so here's Anybody my next question. Need- Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. And yes, anyone in the audience, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll call you up. Anyway, here's my next question. What really got you into you know, telling stories and doing audio plays? Hmm. So before I started writing my own material, I would watch my older brother write his own. He was more of the writer type when we were in our teens and I, I didn't really take writing classes at that time. I just wanted to get started right away. And when I did start writing, you know, the more I learned in school, the better I was able to write. But I think it was just like looking around myself and using my imagination or if it was the kind of music that I would listen to at that time, or just like, I wanted a moment to feel and i think that the times that i would spend with uh friends when formulating these ideas because some inspiration comes from many sources you probably heard that phrase before and i would just get it everywhere so the thing about the whole audio plays though is that of course i knew nothing about animation I'm sure that we all uh, suffer from that as well, but I only wrote stuff for fanfiction.net when I was a teen, and I would meet up with a friend of mine who was partially blind, and he was a fan of some of the same things as I was, and he knew that I wrote stories, and I'm like, I I wish I could uh, show it to you in some way, and he's like, no need, man, I could just use text-to-speech on my phone, I could have it read aloud to me. And I'm thinking, I, I need more of a colorful way of doing this. Like, I heard audio dramas on the radio before. Ever heard of uh, Adventures in Odyssey? <laughs> there you go. So I thought, this, is, this could be just a thing for me. If I can't animate, at least I can play the sound. This is uh, what I already have the knowledge on. And 
I'm hoping that I can harness this in the best way that I can to make it really, really enjoyable. And sure, maybe it wasn't that great in 2016, 2017, but from, I think from 2021 onwards, that's the best we'll get. That's the best that I have been able to do. And I'm honestly glad that you guys were a part of it, uh, a part of that journey. It's our pleasure. That is a great answer. Thank you. I mean, looks like we got looks like we got a few hands raised now. Uh, Ultimate, mind calling up the next person? Ah, uh, sure. One sec. Um, let's see. Uh, well, we got two options. I'm gonna call up Clover. Hi, Clover. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Hello. I don't know if my question is that perfect, but. Um, how did you get into voice acting? Like, have you been to college to take voice acting classes or anything? Well, uh, MC has already asked me a similar question, but I guess I can give you the shorter version. So, being a voice actor came to me quite um, coincidentally. Like, again, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a passion that I wanted to pursue. It was mainly... Well, I was already doing audio dramas at the time, so I thought, okay, uh, whoever is not casted, I will do that character. And that's how I got a vast majority of roles throughout uh, 2018 to 2021. It was that year that I started doing Knuckles because, um, like, no one else would come to take him. So after doing him for two episodes... MC then contacts me, asking me to voice Knuckles for his first comic dub, the Chili Dog uh, stand face off. And I'm like, oh, all right, I, I guess I can do that. I send it to him. And when I see it on YouTube, I'm like, wow, that's the first time you ever hear me as Knuckles on anyone else's video. Um, is it OK if, uh, um, if MC can answer that? The, the question? Uh, well, I mean, he does have his own side of the story, too. <laughs> oh. I mean, okay. it, let's, let's, direct, let's direct many of the questions to Cole. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Clover. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your question. Right. Back to the audience. Now, remind Anybody everyone know? that this ain't uh, MCs or my panel. Uh, this is uh, Cole's panel. Uh, so direct all questions to him. Do not include myself or MC in this. Uh, unless, like, I don't know. I mean, we all worked with Cole here, so like, I don't know. They're, they're, they're just, just, just ask him about Cole, not, not, not us. They uh, all have yeah. their own stories to tell at their own time, alright? I mean, I've already told mine, like, countless times. But... Anyway. Oh, you posted the, uh, the Chili Dog standoff. Isn't that the one yep. I was in? Yep, that's when you were in as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, man, I've nice. done that thing. I've done that. I've done the comic like three times. <laughs> I think that All was. Right, the worst. We, we got a couple oh. more hands raised. Uh, Cole, you mind choosing the next person? Yeah. All right. Well, since I see that Sonic Hero's hand was up next, I guess we can do him. Okay, let's call him up. Uh, hello. Hello there. Hello there. <laughs> hello, I am. Before I ask my question, I have two questions. Or, uh, um, uh, um, know this, uh, um, R Riggy, um, birthday was yesterday. Oh, what's your question? I mean, after I, I'm done telling, uh, um, the, of uh, the two YouTubers' birthday, uh, Riggy what? and, uh, Russo, and my question is, have you seen the new Minecraft movie trailer? Well, I've seen a lot of uh, clips. I've seen some screenshots, though I never actually sat down to watch the trailer all the way through because um, I am not necessarily the Minecraft player in the family. But um, I have I have played a fair share of it uh, once in a great while. But just from the looks of it, I thought... This isn't going to be good. And, uh, <laughs> I'm don't, pretty sure don't, everyone's just the same way. Don't worry about it. Don't mm. don't bother watching it. Really, it's it, it ain't good. Mm. I'm glad I saw the warning signs. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank, anyway, you for, thank you for your question, Sonic Heroes. Oh, you're you. welcome. Cool. All right. 
I think it's my turn again, so I'm gonna call uh, up. Actually, actually, it's actually it's my turn. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, my bad. Cabbage. Go ahead and, and snag somebody. Called Emerald cabbage. Yeah, what do you know? That was the person I was gonna call up. I wonder Listen. why. What are the uh, hello, cabbage? Hello. Okay, so I don't, I don't know if anyone asked this question yet, but what is your favorite part of doing these voice projects? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. Well, I mean, from all my experiences, I think I've had the most fun thinking of the story, just like being inspired to tell a story and then rehearse it over and over and over again until I make sure I have it nailed down. And then um, when I get to writing it, you know, I'm able to tweak it here and there. I'm like editing and I'm like uh, just soaking it in as i go along and then as i do it i had that feeling like oh yeah the voice actors are going to love this they're going to have so much fun with this i might as well even uh send a chill down their spine with this twist right here and even they'll never see it coming it's like i'm already uh facing an audience and trying to have fun with them about it and it's like uh, making a wholesome moment, even for the characters. Uh, it's one of my favorite aspects of writing a story is the interaction with the characters. You know, coming up with some uh, dialogue that would make them click off with each other. You know, they're having fun with each other. They have each other's backs and they're not going to give up on each other whatsoever. And when the voice actors record those lines and then I piece them together in the editing process, I, I mix them and I hear that interaction being played out and I don't just imagine the characters saying those things I, I, I realize that's us that's us doing this thing that's us with those voices, we're full of magic <laughs> oh, that, that sounds awesome yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for your question, Emerald Cabbage. You're welcome. Thank you for answering my question. All right, thank you. All right, Ultimate, you got another question? I do indeed. Uh, let's see. Uh, Cole. Uh, oh. Well, I had a question. Now it's just escaped me. One minute. I do this a lot, guys. That's just my thing. Ordinarily, most people get kicked off the stage, but I, you know, ah, uh, okay. Oh, uh... What do you see yourself doing in the future uh, when it comes to like these sort of projects and stuff? Do you have any like special things coming up? Well, I mean, I do have something currently in the works that I have not yet fully revealed, but I probably shouldn't spoil that right now. Um, as much as I still do get inspiration from time to time, like even this year, I have got some inspiration for what I'm hoping to do next year. But at the same time, I realize I'm getting old. I can only Sorry. I can only keep this up for so long now because here I am at 26 years old, still doing oh, what I was hoping to do old. since I was Come 12. On, I'm interrupting for a second. That's not old. No, get get your head out of the out of, out of there. You're not old. Hit 30, and then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, I realize people like Mr. Gojira95, one of the first Sonic YouTubers I looked up to, and Shadow759, like, they're older than me. Are they still doing this stuff? They sure are. At least I know Shadow759 is. Oh, my. They've got spirits. They've got inspiration. Mm. But, um, I... I mean, if, if all, uh, if everyone really wants to see something new from me pretty soon, then... I guess I can do it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's an interesting answer. All right. Uh, looks like we got a hand raised. Ultimate, ultimate want to call up. Ultimate want to call up. Someone has a hand raised. Uh, yes. Uh, I am multitasking at the moment. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Ever multitasking? Josh. On stomach. <laughs> Hold on, Josh. It's <laughs> Josh. Just. Big to me and he goes, MF, that ain't old either. Because <laughs> he's 30. <laughs> oh. or, no, he's not 30 yet. He's uh, getting there, though. Oh, that ain't old. 
It is old, Josh. Sorry, you're an old man. Uh, I'm going to call up the old, uh, right? Is that, is that what we're doing, calling up people? Yep. Okay. Well, uh, Prankster. Hi, hello there. How's, how is everybody today? Hope we're doing... Hey, Prankster, doing well. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, Cole, right? Yes. So I did have a question prepped for this. Um, what's oh, your no. favorite and least favorite part of the, the creative process? Well, it's like I said before, one of my favorite parts is um, just imagining the story and writing it in a way that even the voice actors would enjoy it. And then when we record those lines and piece them together in the editing process, um, it's, I realize, yeah, that's us doing this and we're having so much fun with it. But I think that my least favorite process is, well, first of all, finding the right time to record because I live in one of the worst neighborhoods possible. <laughs> and oh. um, yeah, just trying to find maximum privacy for uh, that, you know, less noise. And then um, the waiting time for, for me to collect everything else. And then the last least favorite part of mine is mixing the audio and editing it and that usually takes uh the most amount of time because i have to sit on my rear end for hours on end just to get at least one or two scenes done within a day but like you can't rush perfection at the same time it's got to be good so yeah it's yeah gotta the be more... so- it's got to be something the whole audience can enjoy exactly and because if you rush it we can't enjoy it. Yeah. It's not like Sonic games have ever rushed their projects ever before. No, oh, yeah. not so ever. Not so, <laughs> not, uh, not once. No. What about Sonic 06? No. <laughs> yeah, no, they totally uh, never rushed Sonic 06. Oh, never. Oh, absolutely never. But <laughs> thank you for answering How my dare question, you? Cole. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> I haven't played that much, so you're welcome. Thank you for coming. All right, no problem. Yeah, thanks for your question, Prankster. Great to see you. Okay, um, let's see. Let me see if I got another question here. How do you handle? Mm, how do you handle basically a content creator's version of art block or uh, writer's block or something like that? Well, um, most times, like when I come up with a plot. But it's not because before I go to writing, I usually rehearse a scene over and over and over again until I get the perfect version. And then I write it down. I write down from memory. Okay, which worked the best? I write that down. But sometimes like I will have a basic plot in mind, which I try to rehearse, but the dialogue just doesn't sound right. It's like this doesn't seem to fit fit into place that well and so i only write like pieces of it like what remains to be pieced together like the rest of the puzzle and i have to spend more time trying to uh daydream or to brainstorm or just rehearse until i get it right the next time and one example is uh when i wrote menace of the multiverse it took a while for me to come up with a perfect ending for it because at first i was like just get it over with and then because it had a different ending than what we ultimately got in the trilogy of time then i then i realized that someone who was close to me was about to pass away and i'm not sure i'm allowed to say who that was but Um. that was when i felt compelled to change that ending and have Sonic reminisce to the time he lost Chip and kind of express sadness. That was like, that's, that broke the block for me. It's a feeling that the audience would be able to relate to is sadness. And I was hoping the story would help. It was a great scene to record. <laughs> Thank you. Ultimate, you got another question? Um, let's see. Um, what would, what would you, your advice be for someone who's wanting to get into content creation but don't know where to start? Well, I mean, I wish I had the best answer for that. And when I say the best, I mean like something that can come off the top of my head. 
because for me personally, I started ever so slowly. You know, it's, it's like you start in a very experimental phase. Nothing is perfect until you try and try again over and over and over again until you got it all nailed down and the tent stays up. <laughs> but um, if they don't know where to start, I would suggest that they would practice voice impressions. Because if, like, if you don't know what to write or to illustrate or to animate, at least try with voices. Because even if you don't know what to do yourself, you can at least try with other people. And, of course, someone here right now has done that before. Looking for voice work, he found it soon. And then, soon enough, he became a content creator of his own. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Whatever that could be. I wonder. Me. I actually have no idea. That's why I'm asking. What are those crazy mysteries? It? What is it? Was it UNC? Maybe. What? Anyway, That's here's pretty cool. here's my next question. What is a good? What is a? What was one moment you enjoyed recording for a character? It could be for one of your own projects, or it could be for someone else's. What was a moment you had you, you had fun recording it? Well, that's um, that's kind of hard. I think there were about uh, a few instances. Um, I'm going to give at least a couple examples. Um, one from my own project was when I was uh, recording for T. W. Barker for. Um, Days of Dudes and Roses. You wrote that. <laughs> and um, I was able to practice on his mysterious, sinister tone and his accent. And combining them was a thrill, especially with the dialogue that you wrote. Oh, oh I wouldn't count on it. And mm -hmm. then um, another other instances I had fun was voicing Boom Knuckles for a comic dub that Tony VA did for her Diamond Dubs channel. When Knuckles um, came into contact with a crab and yes. screamed because of that water and had to wash himself out. That was funny. And then I think the latest time... Oh, wait. I don't think I should talk about this one because you haven't put it out yet. Ooh. Let me guess, does it involve Boom, Boom Knuckles again? Oh, yes. I think I know what you're talking about. Spoilers. Yep, it's a little tippy tap secret. Anyway, Ultimate, you have another question? Uh, yes. How about, let's try... Um, oh, people love pets, so do you have any animals that you care for? Well, uh, my family has gone through three different cats over the years. Um, <laughs> when I was, when I was very, very, very young, this was before my younger brother was born, we had a black cat named uh, Franklin. I don't remember much about him personally, but from what my folks told me, he would tear up the furniture. He was not that well behaved. And then, um, the next cat we had was 2011. That was Wilson. And we had him for 12 years. He passed away last year. And <laughs> yeah, one of my episodes was in loving memory of him. Aww. Aww. But then later that same year, 2023, we got a new cat. It was a girl this time. Her name is Darla. And she's not as open or adventurous as Wilson was. Like Wilson was a lot more open, a lot more tolerant darla's uh kind of on edge but she's still very sweet very nice hey you haven't hmm. let, me see, let me get another question up here hmm. where can people find you and your work oh good question <laughs> that's easy look at my socials uh sorry um shameless plug uh, oh no <laughs> oh no not the shameless plugs again no but um yes. i no, I do have a standard YouTube channel. Uh, my name is in there. It's just Coliosis, nothing else. Um, and then I have my, obviously, my record company. It has its own channel as well. It uploads uh, album streams of what I have put out over the years. And uh, you can find, you know, purchase links for that on my Bandcamp. 
and my CDs and vinyl on Kunaki. But as for my other content, uh, you will also find my other voice acting clips and artwork on my Instagram. And then I also have uh, Twitter, but that place is like a dumpster fire now. Yeah. Always was. Gosh, like before it became that way, my dad was the most followed person in the Quad Cities alone on Twitter. And then it became a celebrity dumpster fire. That's not it. But anyway, I'm also on Casting Call Club, and once in a great while, I will um, look for projects that need voice work, and I'll send some demo clips to uh, with the hopes that I would get hired. That's it. Uh, Ultimate, do you have an, another question? Uh, mm, nah, I don't have anything else. Hmm. Let me let me pull up another one. Here's one. What got you into the Sonic franchise in the first place? Well, there were about a couple phases of that. And when I was like nine, I got some of those uh, Sonic Liquid Crystal games from McDonald's. <laughs> I bet you remember that. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I had a Sonic Racing and Knuckles Soccer and a Shadow Hockey and at first, I didn't know what these characters were. I just picked those up because I thought they looked cool. And so I didn't know who Knuckles or Shadow were at the time. I just saw their pictures. I thought, well, that's cool. I'm going to play these games. <laughs> and um, I mean, I, I already knew who Sonic, Tails, and Amy were at least. But then it was uh, a few years later that I played Super Smash Brothers Brawl for the first time. And I saw that Sonic was a guest character in there. Mm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I haven't seen him in a while. And then later on, some friends of mine who had that game, who let us play it, they, uh, you know, they would talk much about it to the point where I was starting to take a lot more interest in it. Uh, And other times I would play Sonic the Hedgehog 3 on a friend's Wii. And I'm like, trying to figure out more and more of this beloved franchise that I am beholding. And uh, soon enough, I started to take more and more interest, and I eventually went out and bought my first Sonic game, which some of you are probably going to moan when I mention the title. It was Shadow the Hedgehog. Ooh, that's a controversial hot take. I thought it looked cool. I thought, this is so edgy and epic. My heart is racing just by looking at the box art. I'm ready to discover the truth. Mm. And after that? And after that, I, uh, you know, I played through it a few times. I, uh, I eventually got a Nintendo Wii with Sonic Unleashed for my birthday. And I played through that. And I started to watch the shows. Like Sonic X was the first. Sonic Underground. Uh, Adventures of Sonic, the Satayem series, and started reading the comic books. And at that point on, I was I was hooked. Very, that's pretty epic. Can you, what can you tell us about the software you use, and what equipment do you use to do your projects? Hmm. So for recording, I um, <laughs> embarrassingly I used to use a voice memo app on my phone, and I would have my gaming headset plugged into it with my microphone. And that's how you hear me voice knuckles in uh, taking back Brooklyn and Rose on the road. And then later on, I started using the more professional equipment like um, the Shure MV7 podcast microphone, which I'm currently using right now. And um, the recording programs, I used to use the voice memo program on my laptop. I now use Audacity. I still have it updated to the latest version because I got to get better quality. I care about the quality so much. And um, as far as the editing and mixing goes, I use a free program called DaVinci Resolve. It's mainly a video editing program, but with that knowledge that I have, that I have taken in when I used to use Adobe Premiere Pro, um, I was able to harness what I already recognized and just kind of mess around with it a lot more. I was able to get some clearer quality when mixing audio dramas because back then they sucked. 
But now, like, I think what we have since Days of Dudes and Roses, since that was the first that I mixed with Da Vinci Resolved, everything after that just sounded brilliant. Okay, I got another question for you. What are some of your inspirations? These could be for content creating, for voice acting, for anything that you do. Well, um, I have mentioned that some inspiration has come from, like, from life. Just looking around myself and trying to capture what I see or hear when it comes to, you know, gathering with friends or traveling places or what kind of atmosphere i'm in the weather and stuff like that but there's also obviously some other video games tv shows films stuff like that um uh, batman um gosh what, what, what else the three stooges in terms of comedy and the humorous aspects and stuff like that yes. and <laughs> That's practically where we get a lot of the shenanigans of Dr. Eggman, Wario, and Waluigi. I just think, oh yes, that is perfect. <laughs> Maybe it's not slapstick, but it's just the way they interact. Yep. Those guys were comedic geniuses. Nice, nice. I got another question. Who is a character you haven't voiced yet, but would like to? You know, there were plenty that I put on my Sonic character's voice demo reel that... Um, I still never really found the chance of voicing, though I have made some demos, recordings for Casting Call Club. I made one for Knuckles, one for Shadow, and one for Big the Cat that I still have that I would send whenever they would just uh, say, say something that you think would fit. But other characters that I would really like to voice would be Soar the Eagle, broadcasting live from Village Center, because <laughs> I just want to go on with that heroic voice over and over and over again. And then there's uh, either Orbot or Cubot. <laughs> Attention, everyone! There are no birds! Granted, I <laughs> probably sound yeah, better Cubot's if I didn't have a pretty fun character to voice once you get the hang of it. Oh, you are absolutely correct, Cubot. <laughs> all right, all right, you two. <laughs> all right. Do we have any hands raised? I see them not. <laughs> oh, we got one right here. We do. Uh, Another one from Daniel? Yeah, well, I guess we could get Daniel up again. It's kind of a slow panel. Rinse and repeat time back on the live chat. Well, the stage, so to speak. I mean, it could be a live Hello chat. Hello again. Well, I mean, the reason why I just come up is like, since it's all about Paul, oh, since it's specifically about him, and make sure I get to ask my question right away without getting interrupted. So, Cole, I don't know if you've been to conventions or cons before, if you have or haven't. Um, do concerts count? No, 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 no. like, as in, like, cosplay conventions. I, 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 you I mean? know, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking, but I like, have not. I, <laughs> well, I, the reason why I want to bring this up, because my question to you is, well, if you ever hypothetically do, trust me, it gets very expensive and very crowded. And I've been to, like, four or five of them throughout my whole life. Heck, even cosplaying as the Eggman one time. But, however... It doesn't matter which con it is or which voice actor it is. If there's like anyone that, whether it's a voice actor or a celebrity that you admire or aspire, who would you imagine to be like, oh, I should be in line for this? Who will it be and why? Uh, oh, gee. There were plenty. Uh, one that I would really, really, really love to see would be Mike Pollock. Because, like, when I first heard his voice for Dr. Eggman, it blew me away. It's mm. like the talent that I never thought was possible until I heard that voice of his. I'm like, is that Brian Doyle Murray? No, it's very <laughs> to the voice of the flying Dutchman. <laughs> of course, uh, he would be one of them. Uh, another one I would love to see, and I'm sure MC would want to do the same, is James Arnold Taylor. Oh, uh, yeah. Kenobi. Yes. yes. I love his voice for Ratchet, for Ratchet and Clank. He just doesn't stop with that. And I've, I've been hoping to watch his new faith-based film, uh, Hidden Blessings, soon. I'm going to have to get mm -hmm. to that soon. And yeah. if there was one other that I would love to see, this, and you may not recognize him, but it's Earl Alexander, uh, the voice of Lewis from Left 4 Dead. 
And mm. I'm pretty sure you all remember his iconic quotes, pills here. But yeah, it's just, he brought that character to life in such a fun way. Now you're referring to like the coach guy that says, I sure wish the burger tick was open. I could go for a barbecue bacon burger, but I'm expecting it's a different character. Uh, don't worry, coach is still lovable. Yeah, he still is, especially with barbecue bacon burgers. But quite surprising that you mentioned Mike Pollock, which I've never met the guy. The only guy that I have met from the Sonic crew was Roger Craig Smith, which I'd done the voice of Eggman at once when the funny moment when I met Roger around that time, it's kind of funny when got, you know, you had to, had to make like some payments to make the video. Literally, I like when I did my solid impression of Eggman. I like that on camera. Roger's like, he's coming for you, Mike's more like, I'm coming along with you, Mike, along with that. So just did a little bit of the voice. Uh, all thing. right, all right. Thank thank you for that, Daniel. Uh yes. It's just I, a I've met Mike. Yeah, I've met Mike Pollock twice. Super nice guy. Oh yeah, he's a, really chill actually. He has terrible oh, dad yeah. jokes. Oh so both of you have met him? Yeah I have. Yep. Uh <laughs> It's a couple of several times, actually. Oh. But yeah, uh, thank you for your question. No problem. I'll be stepping out the door. You take care of the panel for yourselves. Have a good night, boys. Yeah, we'll be fine. I well, yeah, we, we, we'll be fine. Okay. Let's see. Do we have another question here? Okay. What's your favorite genre? Play genre be like of... For, like for, mov- for movies, for games, TV shows? I guess I can... For... Hmm... I'm not much of a movie watcher, but uh, in terms of like games, I enjoy uh, first-person shooters, obviously, uh, especially some that are more horror-based. But if it's more like AAA horror, where it's like pixelated or um, a bit too wacky, then it's it's like it just doesn't really seem to fit the bill for me. You know, Doom is a great example of some very suspenseful first person shooters and you got left four dead obviously you got um killing floor one of my personal favorites and then am i allowed to say favorite genre for music yeah sure okay so i'm a i'm like the only metalhead in the family so i will listen to uh whichever death metal crosses my path and even the different styles of like brutal death metal where everything's all a little more crunchy, the old school death metal, which is like reflecting uh, how they used to do it back then when it was still an underground era, just emerging. And like, I don't know why I find it so catchy. Like I find the brutal stuff very catchy. Uh, Granted, I don't listen to like every single song that captures some rungy lyrical themes. I'm like, no, that's, that's not for me. You can make it sound awesome, but the lyrics have to stay awesome along with it. And I know some of you might disagree with me on that if you're more of a secular death metal listener. Um, to each his own, uh, if that makes sense. Right. So my next question is, you mentioned that you have a record label. What do you, li- what do you enjoy most about that? So, I guess I enjoy mostly Coming to the agreements with those bands who want to get signed, who want to see their stuff get put out there, and being handed the resources, like the master tracks, to uh, upload them to my band camp and be allowed to create the layout and artwork for the CDs and for the vinyl jackets, and then show it to them for the approval, and then when we release it um, and it catches some eyeballs, it catches some ears and it gets shared, reshared. And I've, um, I've seen a lot of um, web zines and Facebook groups share that kind of stuff. And it shows that, yeah, what we're doing is working. People actually like what they hear. They, they like what they see and they want to, Spread the word. See if there are any fans of the genre out there. Very nice. Okay, looks like we've got another hand raised up here. I'm going to call up Bad Eater. I think that's how you pronounce it. Batiador? Hello. Hello, Hello, Cole. Also, it's pronounced Bateador. But I appreciate the pronunciation. 
Also, h- hello, Coliosis. Uh, Coliosis, sorry. I just wanted to say, you have a really nice username. I think it's very cool. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to imagine you're, you're voice acting or you're writing for work or uh, you're writing dialogue, so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, this question pops into your head. And it goes like, let's say you had a million dollars. Now, let's say you had $999,999 taken away from you, and you were left with $1. What would you do? I'd save it. Ooh, okay, okay, nice. You know what? I like that answer. A lot of people would usually say, nah, I'd probably buy a drink. And then I'd say, well, what drink? You know? Well, what what drink could cost a dollar? And then I realized, oh, it's Arizona. But yeah, all right, that's all I wanted to ask. Again, you have a very cool name. Thank you. Absolutely. You have a great rest of your day. Or night. You Thanks for the question. Mm, likewise. If you could please step down off the stage real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to... Uh, oh, you I got kick. <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, Ultimate, do you have any more questions? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> nice uh, zombie growl. Sorry, uh, I just I tried to think. Um, I have any questions? Sorry. <laughs> so I have one. I've seen you know, also Thanks. like doing sign covers. What do you like about that? I think. I mean, I don't do them as often as I used to because for the ones that you've already heard, the production was not very professional. I'll tell you that much. I was not very proud of those. But what I do like about them is like I, I I'm able to show that I have a passion for a song in particular and it's like man that song holds a place in my heart and I am able to project that kind of love for that song and do it in a way where you hear me do something about it Maybe that's not the best way to describe it, but um, I think the most times that I've ever really done a cover is when we collaborated on them. We would um, do those Crush 40 covers in the voices of Sonic and Knuckles. And then there was um, that one we did of The Boys Are Back, and that took a year and a half to wait for the final version. But yeah. nonetheless, I enjoyed, <laughs> I, I enjoyed doing it, though. I enjoyed. Um, hearing a song that was completely unfamiliar to me and then playing it on repeat so that I can get it nailed down and practice it as I go along until I get it nailed down and then finally record and do a little dance to the rhythm to make sure I have just the right pace and then but I didn't do it to the original song I didn't listen to the original as I recorded I took your vocals and an instrumental so that I can get the cue and the choreography just right the way that we wanted it to be. Very nice. I see we've got a text question here from Trey Thornton 19. In question, what is your favorite level from Sonic Adventure 2? That's a tough one because I think I had plenty of frustrations with some of them. I think the most frustration was uh, towards the bio lizard, but um, I think my personal favorite is basically the very first section where Dr. Eggman uh, discovers, like, uncovers Shadow in his walking machine. Because is that like the first time you ever play as him in a story based Sonic game? I think so. Uh, just, uh, making it nice and easy for, especially for new players, just uh, waltz in and blast away. Neat. All right. I've got another question for you I have is, what is one upcoming Sonic project that you're excited for? Like, uh, it does, is it... And it doesn't have to be from you. It could be one of the official things or, or even another fan yeah. project that you've seen in, in, is at work in progress. You know, I... I that's kind of hard for me to uh, think about it because I don't really, 
I haven't really paid attention uh, around myself in that department as of lately, but um, I think that the closest I can get to in terms of excitement and all, like maybe not, oh boy, oh, oh, but more like adrenaline rushing and heart pounding just by knowing it's coming is like the Sonic 3 movie. Like, yes. I think what we have already seen so far, maybe not the whole of it, and maybe there will be more characters to be revealed, but I think what we've already seen so far is enough to instill, like, excitement and chills into someone's heart, because it's like, oh yeah, it's there, we see it, and it's already, it's already got our blood pumping so hard. Very good question, very good answer. Now, if we don't have any more questions, I guess we can end the panel early. Yeah, so, I was going to say. So, yeah. so, All right. So unless anyone has any more questions. Uh, Paul, you want to get? Oh, I will try to do that as best as I can. Um, at least this panel was uh, more on the quiet side than of the overcrowded, rowdy side. Like when you're trying to enjoy each other's company in a discord voice chat and all of a sudden it gets too crowded. Um, but I just want to, uh, thank, uh, those who actually raise their hands and ask me a question. And, uh, thank you to, uh, Kevin for Kevin and Josh Hodgson for letting us do this and to ultimate and MC for, uh, co-hosting this and for collaborating for the past uh, however many years it's been. Yeah. And uh, and for when you'll ever hear from me again, I do not know. But... He's going away on a trip, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am going on another trip this weekend, but... Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been a very quiet panel. At least it's uh, better than nothing. Yeah. But, like again, just thank you for thank you all for bearing with me. Uh, thank you for being here, and uh, hopefully, you, you know, for whatever comes next, I will be sure to keep you all posted. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for stopping by. I will announce the next panels coming out. So tomorrow, uh, we have the uh, Rebel replays where they're going to play uh, more. Uh, Oh, they're restarting their gameplay on Sonic Frontiers. Oof. So they'll be uh, doing that tomorrow at uh, 10, a, at 10 p.m. No, I nearly, nearly said a.m. So, but 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. And then on Tuesday, they will be having the multiplayer madness. I may or may not. Oh, it's not o'clock. Mm, I may appear and beat everybody there again because they all need a, a severe uh, beating by my uh, superior racing brow. I'll stop. Uh, but uh, on Thursday, though, is uh, Sonic and Surge 3. So after the events of what happened, if you remember, uh, Sonic turned into Dark Sonic, thanks to the <laughs> Dr. Starline. Uh, they're going to be matching up again. That'll be on Thursday, September 19th at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time at B... Uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, I believe. But yeah, uh, that's going to be fun. And the stage is going to get blown up. Sorry, Kevin. Anyways, we will see you all next time. And until yeah, then, I've yeah. been the ultimate voice actor. And let me just say, Cole, it's been an honor collaborating with you for the past like a little over three years. Me voicing Sonic for you and you voicing Knuckles for my projects. And it's just been an honor working with you. Yeah, and I just wanted to problem. thank everyone for coming. Yeah, all right. We'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. So long.